Hey, up, it's Steve from that old Yorkshire geek. Uh, got a bit of Star Wars news right now. This is from Bounding Into Comics. As I always say, could be a little bit spicy. <laughs> so let's get it up. Uh, as they say. <laughs> Apologies if you can hear howling around me. I don't think the microphone will pick it up. It's really, really windy here today. It's blowing a gale. I was supposed to have a doctor's appointment this morning, but I've had to rearrange. I'm not going out in this weather. Uh, hopefully uh, there'll be no damage, but you never know. It's really howling out there. Storm Otto, apparently. But anyway, right. Anyway, back to uh, back to this from John F. Trent at Bounded Into Comics. John Favreau provides bogus answer for why Baby Yoda reunited with the Mandalorian in the book of Boba Fett. Of course, we all know the real answer is Disney wants to make money on the uh, Baby Yoda toys, <laughs> Grogu toys. That's the real answer. They don't want him out of the, you know, off the screen for too long. Uh, I.e. at all. Right. Uh, the Mandalorian executive producer and creator John Favreau provided one of the most bogus answers as to why he and Lucasfilm chose to reunite Baby Yoda with Din Jarin in the book of Boba Fett after he previously had Luke Skywalker take him at the end of The Mandalorian Season 2. I mean, we've had one episode. <laughs> where they've not been together, uh, which were in the book of Boba Fett, uh, the first, there were two Mandalorian episodes, weren't there, and then the first one is not there, they're not together, and then they're reunited in the second one, I think, uh, to be honest, I could be wrong, uh, I only watched book of Boba Fett once, uh, that's all it were getting from me. Right, Favreau spoke with Empire about the upcoming third season and was asked, uh, about why he chose to bring the two characters back together after separating them. Uh, he explained, we couldn't just hit a hard reset. It's going to be, in well, why did they separate them then? It's going to be interesting to see how this unfolds for people who may, may not have seen the Book of Boba Fett, but I think the Book of Boba Fett offered time to pass. It won episode. <laughs> it was one episode, for Christ's sake. You saw what Mando was like without Baby Yoda. Yeah, he was fine. Uh, and we saw what Grogu was like without the Mandalorian. He was fine as well. Although they tried to make it out that, you know, he wasn't. Uh, we just got a deep fake Luke being a knob. And neither of them was doing too good. They were, they were fine. So them coming back together was a really good plot point that allows us to jump back into season three while maintaining the central relationship, he elaborated. I mean, basically, Baby Yoda was my son <laughs> in that. In that he decided he wanted to go and become a Jedi, to go with Luke and train to become a Jedi. Didn't like it after an hour. Thought, oh, this isn't for me. I've been doing this for an hour. Don't like it. I want to go home. That's what it was. That's what my son does. This answer is completely bogus given Din Djarin and Grogu, Baby Yoda, uh, are fictional characters, and whether or not they work together or apart is on the writers and creators of those fictional characters. True. To claim that the characters did not work apart is an admittance that you failed in your job as a writer and creator to make them work. Also true. Uh, but they did work apart. You just decided that they didn't work. They were fine. You wrote that they didn't work. It wasn't like a a natural thing. You know, like in real life, people don't work, you know, when they're apart and they come back together. That, you know, a real life emotion thing. This is that fiction, as John F. Trent says. It's a fictional thing. So you make it work. Nevertheless, Favreau went on to say, just because this kid has the potential, he's 50, has the potential and had training, he, uh, does he belong away from the Mandalorian? Uh, yes. I saw it more like Paper Moon, where the whole thing is about delivering the kid to a blood relative, only to realise that, whether genetically through her father or just through bonding, Tatum O'Neill has to end up with Ryan O'Neill. That ending feels really good to me. And uh, like everybody's saying, I've not seen Paper Moon, I don't know what you're talking about. Because I've not seen Paper Moon. I'm sure a lot of people have, but people that watch Star Wars are probably thinking, I've not seen Paper Moon. 
And this little kid, Grogu, is given the decision to choose, and the kid chooses the emotional relationship and wants to be with the Mandalorian and passing up Yoda's lightsaber. Did we see that? Honestly, I can't remember. As I said, I just watched it once. Uh, the Book of Boba Fett. So did Yoda's lightsaber appear in that? I'll have to have a look again. I, can't, I honestly can't remember. If, if that's what it says, it says, and fair enough. Part of you wants to see him develop in that way, and part the other, he added. No, we wanted him to see him train to be a Jedi. That's what we wanted to see. We didn't want to see him reunite with, um, with Mandalorian. Not so fast. You know, eventually, down the line, we wanted to see him come back together. A fully trained, or oh, as best he can, um, Grogu. Maybe a bit older, a little bit wiser. Maybe he can talk. But that's down the line. We don't want it after one bloody episode. The issue with this explanation is that the story in The Mandalorian up to season two, en uh, up to the season two ending, made it clear that the two characters were not actually supposed to end up with each other. In fact, the show makes it abundantly clear that The Mandalorian is tasked to deliver Grogu to a Jedi by the Armourer. Yeah, that was his mission. The whole overarching plot of season two is The Mandalorian seeking out a Jedi to deliver Grogu to. Two. <laughs> Trying to claim the two are destined to be together contradicts the show's actual plot. Well, yeah, it does. Because that was his that was his task, that was his mission to you know return the uh, the foundling to uh, to his people. <sighs> On top of contradicting the plot, it is now uh, it also now downplays the entire emotional scene of him handing over Grogu to Luke Skywalker to train as a Jedi. I mean, it could be argued that. Uh, Din Djarin became his people, became Grogu's people, when the armourer gave him the, um, I forgot to call it, the mud thing sigil, that rhino that Grogu force lifted into the air. Uh, anyway, uh, that moment really has no meaning anymore as it was simply erased in an extremely poorly written two episode arc that sees Grogu return to the Mandalorian after being given an ultimatum by Luke Skywalker. That's like telling a baby, isn't it? You, you, you can either have this, you can have this sausage, uh, or you can have um, this uh, this ice cream. Uh, which which would you rather have? <laughs> and ninety nine percent of kids had picked the ice cream. Uh, by the way, the, the, uh, Din Djarin's the ice cream in this scenario. Uh, Favreau would also tell Empire, you have this interesting character who has Jedi training to some extent, force abilities, but is also is joining the Mandalorian culture, which we've established is something you, that you can opt into. It demands a lot, it offers a lot. Historically, Mandalorians developed all those tools and armour and weapons to be able to counteract the force abilities of Jedi. So as a story, this offers tremendous opportunity, he added. Is he really going to be joining the Mandalorian culture? Again, this contradicts what Favreau has actually written in the show. Bo-Katan makes it clear that Din Djarin is part of a fringe cult and not actually part of mainstream Mandalorian culture. Yeah, he's the children of the... Children of the what? I can't remember the call now. That they don't ever remove the helmets, but, you know, other Mandalorians do. Uh, but he seems to have forgotten that. Uh, even if you accept that Favreau is simply talking about the cult, the show does not make it clear you can opt into it. Uh, it's more of a recruiting procedure where they bring in young children and teach them their way, whatever it is, uh, whatever it is as it's never really explained. Uh, and the Mandalorian eschews anything he says he actually believes the minute it becomes a burden for him. Um, yeah, I suppose so. Um, yeah, they, they keep bringing this about foundlings, don't they? If they, they go and the Mandalorian seems seems like the Mandalorian is going fight off some you know enemies, and um, you know the whole town's being slaughtered. But they find some kids that have survived that have been hidden away. They take them and train them to be Mandalorians. It's a bit like um, you know in um, uh, what they call the searches, <laughs> the searches where uh, you know Native Americans. I don't know what you call them these days. Uh, went in and attacked that family, you know, John Wayne's, you know, family, um, and um, took took the daughter, Natalie Wood, took her, and she was raised. Then she was raised for the next few years as a whatever Cherokee or whatever whatever tribe they were. 
Uh, so they're like that, basically, aren't they? Uh, regardless, as noted above, he fulfilled his duty uh, to the way by re uh, reuniting Grogu with Luke Skywalker. Uh, thus, I don't know if they're reunited, we don't know if they've ever met each other before. Uh, thus he's no longer bound to Grogu, and that gets back to the previous point that he was never destined to be with Grogu, as noted in the season one finale, where he does not want to be burdened with Grogu as a charge. Um, Din Djarin. Uh, I don't know, that's, that's not... Uh, I don't know about it. he does not want to be burdened. You don't get that appeal because he's, he's, at the end, he's, he's basically crying, isn't he? He doesn't want Grogu to go, but Grogu you know, chooses to go with Luke, doesn't he? That's, uh, that's what happened at the end of season... I uh... oh, no, that the end of season two, wasn't it? It's on about the season one finale, isn't it? Yeah, yeah sorry. Uh, but over the course of season two, they grow... They grow fonder, even though Grogu's eating everything, as in these eggs. Anyway, there might be another reason as to why Grogu is reunited with the Mandalorian and it has to do with a recent rumour that Lucasfilm wants to have Baby Yoda team up with Ray for a new theatrical film. Did the video about that. Uh, that rumour came courtesy of Scooper WDW Pro who said in recent YouTube video uh, the idea is that somehow Grogu is going to unite with Ray in the next movie if they can work out all the contracts. If they can get Daisy Ridley back easy that Grogu will be a part of it along with R2, Chewie and a brand new character uh, and there's the, uh, the the YouTube vid speaking exclusively with Bounded Into Comics WDW Pro also noted that Grogu had to be removed from under Luke's care because Lucasfilm wants to have him train under Rey despite the significant time gap between the Mandalorian and Disney's sequel trilogy well they forgot they forgot there's like 30 odd years that's supposed to have passed uh, WDW Pro detailed uh, what I strongly believe happened when they had everything mapped out for the second season of Mandalorian. They indeed wanted to separate these characters, but this was part of the broader plan that they had, the roadmap. And that roadmap involved Gina Carano having her own show, Rangers of the New Republic. And there were all these interconnected series. Uh, when what happened to her occurred, done in such terrible taste, they also lost quite a few individuals who were interested in working with them in future series. I think that caused them to have uh, to jettison many of their plans, he relayed. As a result of uh, having to jettison their plans, they didn't have a way, they didn't have a show to be able to now deal with these characters being separated, he explained. They didn't have a vehicle to have Luke and Grogu spend time together and show the Mandalorian by himself on adventures. WDW Pro, 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 Pro later noted, uh, I think they are trying to get back to this Padawan baby Yoda, but the forces that uh, but the forces that be want to do that with Ray, and so I think that's how all of this has been navigated. Is that they've tried to resolve the mess they made with Gina Carano, uh, with the Gina Carano situation. And there she is. Uh, what do you make of John Favreau's explanation uh, for reuniting Baby Yoda with Din Djarin so soon after separating him in the Mandalorian season two finale? Uh, well, they're just money. That's what they're thinking of, isn't it? Baby Yoda merch. That's what they're thinking of, really. Um, that's the bottom line. Because uh, Stone Cold says so. So, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's just flannelling, isn't it? It's called flannelling. He's just making stuff up with John Favreau. Um, they say John Favreau's the saviour, don't they, of uh, you know, Disney Star Wars, but he's not really. He's a, he's a company man, and he'll do as he's told. A lot of people say, oh, you know, he was, he was angry that Gina Carano were fired and all that. Didn't fight for her, did he? Didn't get her back. So he's a company man. He'll do as he's told. Right, we'll leave it there. So thanks for watching, wherever you are in the universe, look after each other, and until next time, I'll see thee. <laughs>